G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. A very warm welcome indeed to this episode about biochar. So, what is biochar? Well, it's any type of organic material that's been through the process called pyrolysis. And that's a Greek word. Pyro means fire, and lysis means separation or separating. So to make good biochar, all the elements need to be separated by fire at a certain temperature and without much oxygen. Biochar is simply decomposing materials at high temperatures. Everything turns into gas, except the carbon. After pyrolysis, there's no nitrogen, no magnesium, no sulfur, no nothing except carbon. A carbon skeleton of what it was before. I'm going to use that carbon and the structure that was created that left all these tiny crevices and turn them into multi-storey microscopic apartment buildings and fill them with microorganisms, the effective ones, and put them in the garden. They'll hang out there while it rains or when I water and they won't wash away and end up in the creek. They'll stay here in my garden and around the roots of my veggies. Biochar is also really good at retaining moisture. It sucks up the water like a sponge. You know, just one little gram of biochar has a surface area of about 260 square metres. That means that if you fold out all these little crevices into one plane, it would be the same area as a tennis court. So considering how small these microorganisms are, one gram of biochar can accommodate trillions of them. You can create more apartments if you activate the biochar while you're making it. Activation opens up the pores of the carbon to increase its surface area and you also need to inoculate the biochar. Otherwise your garden will turn yellow for sure. But more on that later. So here we go. I used a 44 gallon drum and I cut the side out just like this. Probably a good idea to put on protective gear for this job. I'll make sure the little hole is at the bottom. And I cut it like this so it limits the amount of oxygen that can get to the fire. Then I put a few stones around the bottom so it doesn't roll down the hill. When I start it up, I open the little hole at the bottom to let the air in until it gets going, until it gets hot. And I close it up to stop the oxygen getting in. You can use any type of dry plant material. I use hardwood that I get from the sawmill. Thanks mate. And because it's usually quite fresh or green, I let it sit in the sun for half a year or so before I burn it. As long as whatever you're burning is dry, I think you're right to go. You can do it with bamboo or even cow poo. I don't think it matters what you use. All you're doing is saving the carbon skeleton of what it was, but you don't want to burn it into ash by giving it a lot of oxygen. If you let it just burn away, it'll also turn to ash. You need the fire really hot to start with so it doesn't just sit and smoke, okay? You want it to be just fire, no smoke. It'll smoke a little each time you put a new load on, but that's okay. As long as it turns into fire after a few minutes, it's good. If it doesn't and keeps smoking, then open up the little hole at the bottom again and let more oxygen in. 
that'll increase the temperature enough and it will stop smoking and then close it up again. I try not to put too much on at one time. Just keep putting more and more over a few hours until it gets so full of red hot coals that you can't put any more on. By the time you've filled up the drum with coals, you've probably burnt twice as much wood. Half the wood's been used to create the heat and the other half is now red hot coals. Okay, the next step, it's important. This is where I stop it and activate it by filling it up with water. When a really hot surface gets doused with water, it cools it down so quickly that it pops open all the microscopic cavities inside the structure of the coal like popcorn and increases the size of them. In other words, you've just made a one room apartment into a family suite for the microorganisms. It's really important to totally fill up the drum with water until like the coal's floating. So it's totally activated all the way through. Then just open up the little hole at the bottom and let the water drain out. Ready to go, active biochar or activated charcoal. Right, so now we have a few gazillion empty microscopic apartments. Don't put them in your soil yet because it'll suck up all the nutrients and all the water out of your garden and leave your plants looking yellow and sick and tired. So all the micronutrients and microorganisms which poo and fart and feed your veggies will all leave the soil to fill up the new empty apartment buildings that you've just delivered, right? So instead, you want to inoculate them. You want to fill all those empty micro apartments with microorganisms and nutrients. First you'll need to find a way to crush it up if you don't want to use a bit of wood and some elbow grease. By breaking it up, you're making more of it available for the microbes. If you think about how big it is compared to bacteria, it'll be kind of like trekking across the globe. There's no food in the middle. So I crush it up into smaller pieces. So it's like coarse sand particles. You can check if the pyrolysis has worked properly by rubbing some together in your hands and washing it off with just water. If your hands are still black, it means that there's still some resin that has not been burned out or turned to gas. Okay, time to inoculate. All this means is that I need to fill them up with microorganisms, the effective ones. I do this in three ways. One. I mix it with my compashi or my compost. You can put as much as 50% biochar, 50% compashi. I've already mixed this one in this pile, so this is just to show my pile and to show you that you can add it to your compost. Okay? Number two, I mix it in Wormville, my worm farm in a bathtub. There's so many microorganisms in this mixture that they'll come in and fill up the apartments too. Number three, I mix some bacteria juice and some unsulfured molasses with water and let it sit for a week or so. Once it's inoculated, you can mix it in with the soil in the garden or use it when you make potting soil. It's the microorganisms that do the work in your garden. If you look after them, your plants will be healthy. And when you eat them, so will you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you understand what biochar is and that you can make some and use it in your garden too. Wonderful, healthy, happy plants. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later. When I die, I'll become Earth again. I belong to this Earth, and Earth should stay with us. A tree is the same as me. When he gets old, he'll die. He'll be dead and burned. 
They leave his ashes behind. The tree becomes earth. Just like me.